رجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وآية لهم أن حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشحون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن نشأ نغرقهم فلا سريق لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاعا إلى حين صدق الله العظيم Respected elders and my dear young friends. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in this previous ruku the favors and the blessings that he has bestowed upon the human. And in the beginning of the ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that wa ayatul lawmul awdul mayta that one great blessing, great ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is this earth, this ground. یہ زمین جس پہ ہم رہتے ہیں وَعَيْتُ اللَّهُمُ الْعَضُ الْمَيْتَ that once once upon a time it was a dead barren piece of land and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent rain upon it and that same piece of land now became useful you started to irrigate it and you started to grow plants vegetation trees etc which was all for your own nourishment sustenance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then in the same ayat mentions regarding the sun and the moon وَآيَةُ اللَّهُمُ اللَّيْلِ نَسْلَقُ مِنُ النَّهَارِ the second ayat, second nishani, second ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the night and day that we use the day to work, we use the night to sleep in the sun and the moon and the whole solar system how it works to our benefit, to our advantage the ayat that we are reading today is regarding the ocean and the ship so initially Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about the ni'mats on the earth then the nematz in the skies and today we are talking regarding the nematz of the ocean and the sea so Allah SWT says وَعَيْتُ اللَّهُمْ أَنَّا حَمَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّةٌ فِي الْفُلْكِ الْمَشْهُونَ that a sign for them is that we boarded their children at the loaded ship on the loaded ship وَخَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ مِنْ مِثْلِهِ مَا يَرْكَبُونَ and we created for them modes of transport similar مَا يَرْكَبُونَ on which they ride. وَإِن نَشَأْ نُغْرِقْهُمْ فَلَا سَرِيقَ لَهُمْ وَلَهُمْ يُنْقَذُونَ And if we so will, if we so wished and if we so will, نُغْرِقْهُمْ We can drown them. فَلَا سَرِيقَ لَهُمْ Then no one will respond to their cry. وَلَهُمْ يُنْقَذُونَ And no will they be rescued. إِلَّا رَحْمَةً مِنَّا وَمَتَعْنِ لَهِينَ إِلَّا أَنْلَسْ there be mercy from us, meaning from Allah Azza wa Jal, and unless we let them enjoy for a while. So in this ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is starting with the mention and the nemat of the ship. The ship sails and floats on the ocean. And this ocean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made is so vast and so big that in comparison to a ship, the ship is like a small twig in the ocean. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this earth in such a way, it has been formed in such a way that majority of the earth is water and land is less. And the land is divided in such places that sometimes to get from one continent to another, from one place to another, you have to cross this ocean. And the ocean is so vast if somebody was to try swim it, it will not reach because the current in the water, the strength of the waves, the fierce waves, the depth of the ocean is so deep and it's so far that no person will be able to survive this. In fact, the sea, Allah SWT has made the ocean in such a way that if you were to throw a 10 pence coin in, which weighs a few grams, it will go right to the depth of the ocean. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, O oh insan, look at this ship that we have inspired you to make. That this ship carries thousands and thousands of tons of goods. So much weight on it. So many people board in it. Yet they don't drown. Now, Oliver mentioned that the first ship that was made was made by Nuh alayhi salam. Allah mentioned in the Quran, Nuh alayhi salam complains to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and he mentions about his nation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Nur to his nation and he propagated deen for 950 years. How many years? 950 years. <coughs> and he passed the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the people but they were arrogant and they didn't listen. So Nur turned to Allah and he said that Qala Rabbi inni da'utu qawmi layla wa nahara that oh my Allah, oh my Rabb I have called my people, I have called my nation layla wa nahara day and night day in, day out and this teaches a lesson that we as Muslims as believers our duty should be that wherever we get the instance wherever we get the chance to do tabligh then don't let that chance go because you don't know if you will meet the other person you won't know if you get another chance and the more we propagate the stronger our own iman becomes islam iman is such a thing that the more you propagate to others the more it becomes stronger in ourselves the more our yakin increases this is this is the kasir of deen this is the kasir of ilm and deen that the more you spread the more it increases whereas dunya we think worldly assets the more you spread what happens it increases as so, so ali radiyallahu anhu say doubt he used to say, Radina Kismat al Jabbari Fina. We are very happy with the taqsim and the division that Allah SWT has done. Lana ilmun walil juhali man. That Allah SWT has granted us ilm and He has granted the ignorant people wealth. And ilm is such a thing that we don't have to look after ilm, ilm will look after us. When a person has ilm, his ilm will save God. His ilm will tell him, This is a path, this is a path to Jannah. This is the path to Allah's Radha, this is a path to Allah's obedience. And a person who has wealth, does the wealth look after him or does he have to look after wealth? He has to look after wealth. When he's going on holiday, he's, he's constant stress. stress, stress. But then what if somebody goes into my house? What if my car gets stolen? What if somebody takes the money from my house? So he's got wealth and he has to look after wealth. And what does Ilm do? Ilm looks after us. Ilm will just be this is galat. So as said, Nuri for 950 years he didn't believe. And then he saw that his calm won't give him up. And for us, Kartiro, keep doing tabli. If the person doesn't listen, we don't lose our hope. We're doing it for Allah's sake. As Mufti Shavi Sarah Mufti say, that Sunnah ya Nasun. Whether they listen or they don't listen, what do we do? We continue our job. Our job is to propagate. Whether they accept it, whether they are granted it, that's Allah's. Allah will do that. Our job is to propagate. When I call them, then my calling did not do anything but make them run even more. They became more away from them. When I called them, I told 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 them, that the people would put their ears and their fingers in their ears. We don't listen. But he continued, he continued, he continued. Summa inni da'utum jihara. Summa inni alamtulum wa asratulum israra. I told them collectively, subkubata. I even told them silently, individually. Individual tablikia. Collective tablikia. But they didn't listen. So in the end, Nabi said, was salam. And Nabi, he doesn't do but do on his ummah. When does he do it? When he sees that these people are not going to change. The objective that I was sent for, these people are not going to. So right at the end, Nuri said, was made dua. Rabbi la tadar ala al-ardi mal kafi dayyam. Allah, do not leave any dwelling of the kuffar. Finish everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then told Nuri said, was that we are going to send a tufan, a storm, a flood. And that flood will wipe every single person out. Besides the believers. So Allah SWT told Nuhu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَاسْنَا الْفُلْكَ بِيَعْيُنَا Make this ship, we are telling you to make this ship, وَاسْنَا الْفُلْكَ بِيَعْيُنَا under our nigrani, in our supervision, وَوَحْيِنَا and according to our wahi, according to our divine revelation. And Ulama mentioned that Jibreel Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to come and he used to tell Nuhu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how to make a ship because they'd never seen a ship before. 
So Nur A.S. started making a ship. And Shafi Sallallahu Alaihi says that Nur A.S. went and looked for wood, one year old wood. And GBS was telling him how to join everything. And slowly, slowly he made a, he made a ship. And the people would come and they used to start taking mockery. And you take fun of what you do. So Nur A.S. would say, I'm making a house, I'm making a ship that will sail on the water. There's no water here. There's no Allah's going to send a tufan. Allah's going to send such a flood. Allah is going to send such a flood. Ulu mentioned at that time, when they were about to go on the ship, Nuri said, called his son, Ya Bunayr kum ma'ana, wala takum al kafir. Oh my son, mount, embark on the ship, and don't be amongst the transgressors, don't be amongst the oppressors. So what did his son say? Qala sa'awi ila jabal. I will take pana, I will take rescue, I will take refuge in the Mountain. <coughs> Allah Subhanahu said, Refuge you Lord before who? The one that's boarding on the ship. But his uncle said to him that count climb the mountain. He's very high. That's what Ulama say. But when you follow the Quran and you follow the Wahi, you'll be safe. And if you try to follow your uncle and try to use the intellect, then no, 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 my uncle says it. No, it doesn't make sense. Then you will. Lose and you will get destroyed just like Nuri said was salam went on the mountain and he couldn't save himself. So anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired Nuri said was He made this ship. So Ulama said this is the first ship. And Allama Shamsuddin Dhabi Ramtullah mentioned that everything that human were in need of, the skills, the equipment, the know-how to do things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired humans. So in Adam Salam's time when he came from Jannah onto the earth, at that time they needed to know how to make food, how to grow rice. So Allah SWT inspired Adam Salam. So forming all this asal ilm came to Adam Salam. The initial ilm came to Adam Salam. He was taught how to do farming, how to cook food, because that was a necessity of the time. That was a challenge of the time. I think it would mentioned. That to move one thing to another, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired Adam salam regarding the wheel. Make something which is round. So you make it round and it's on a pivot. And as it rotates, what happens? It moves it from A to B. So every car, every bus, every bicycle, every truck, every aeroplane that we see nowadays, what does it have? It all has wheels. But the fundamental, that ilm, who was given that ilm? Adam salam. And as time you go and moves and modernization comes and people progress, they progress with these ideas, but the fundamental is still there. It's a round circle on a pivot and it, it moves and it rotates. And as it rotates, it moves from A to B. Ula mentioned this fundamental in was given to Adam Salam through Allah. Allah dun wahi. So all these things that we see in this dunya, how to build something, etc. Dawud Salam was shown how to make armor. And then now they made different types of armor. But the initial armor, Ali he used to make armor from metal links. And who showed him how to make this? Allah. So Noah mentioned that Allah SWT showed Nuh Salam how to make this ship. He made this ship. And Allah SWT says that that one of the signs is that we boarded their children on the loaded ship. Loaded ship? Which loaded ship? Ulama mentioned this loaded ship of Nuh Salam. How was it loaded? Allah SWT told Nuh Salam that Zawjain is name that gather all the believers in the ship and along with the believers gather male and female of all the animals and all the pots and everything, amtiya, mata, saman ki cheese, gather everything in the ship. The ship was really heavy. And the children, which children? The children of Nuh Ali So Allah is showing them Ahle Makkah that the favor is done upon us. That this ayat was, this Surah Yasin was revealed in Makkah Shri. And it was a lesson for the Ahle Makkah, the Mushriks, that look at the power and look at the kudrat and look at the rahmat of Allah SWT. That if these people were not saved and rescued at the time, no world, you wouldn't be here today. But Allah SWT saved Nuh with his children. 
And before Nuri Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all the progeny was of Adam Alaihi Wasallam. And Nuri Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also falls in that link. He is a grandson of Adam Alaihi Wasallam. But then a time came that the whole world was wiped out. Who was left? Just Nuri Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the believers. And the believers only few. And Nuri Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's children. And they say that after that, after this whole flood, the whole world that came back into existence, all these families, who were they from? Dhuriyat and Dhiyah from the children of Nuri Sallallahu Alaihi Everybody's lineage goes to Nuri Sallallahu Alaihi children. They were the people that the whole world started again from. So Allah Subhanahu is saying that وَعَيْتُلُّمَنَّا حَمَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّةٌ That one of the signs is from, uh, from our Kudrat is that we boarded on the ship their children, the loaded ship. And as the Moshe Tamatullah mentions that Allah Subhanahu is talking about the kuffar of the mushriks of Makkah. That all mushriks of Makkah, your children, you load them, you board them on these ships. Which ships? These ships that go from Makkah, from the Arab world to the other parts, Syria, Yemen, Jabi, wherever he goes to get goods. And what do you do? In, in the Arabic culture, what was it? That when a father gets to a certain age, 35, 40, 45, okay. But he's still, he's still young, he's not old. But as soon as he sees that his children are 20, 22 strong, what does he do? He doesn't work anymore. He's relaxing. Or Bacheko based it. So Allah is saying, look, you're sending your children or what? On the ship which is loaded with goods, with material, going from here to there, and then your children are bringing all these goods back. But does that ship drown? Does that ship drown? No. Allah is saying, look at this Namat of ours, O Ahle Makkah, look at this Namat that we are giving upon you. That you are sending your children. Number one, the Namat is that you are sending your children uh, on these loaded ships and we are protecting them from drowning. Number one. Number two, the children itself is a Namat. That we have bestowed you with children. And number three, Namat. That your children are going far out in the world and they are coming back with goods and you are sat at your home. Alam says everything is coming to you on your doorstep in the comfort of your house. So Allah is saying, look at these nemas that we are providing with you. Look at these blessings that we are providing you with. So when a person sees a blessing, what should he do? He do shukar. And what shukar? The greatest shukar is that you believe in Allah. His oneness, tawheed. And what are you people doing? You are doing the greatest na shukri. After all these nemas, O oh, Ahle Makkah, what are you doing? You are doing shirk with Allah. Allah says, wa khalaqna lahum min mithri ma yarkabun. And we created for them mode of transport similar to it on which they ride. Mode of transport similar to it, similar to the ship. Allah first is only talking about the ship which sails on the ocean. And Allah was saying that we have made, we have created other modes of transport similar to the ship. And in Arabia in them days, the camel used to be the general mode of transport on land. So the ship was used to cross the continents on ocean, on sea. And the camel was used to cross country by country on land, on desert, because the camel was such that it can cross the desert. Allah SWT made the camel in such that it has a hum, and in there is so much water stored that for days it can walk. And the Arabs used to call the camel Safina Tul Bar, the ship of the land. Just like the boat is the ship of the ocean. See, the camel was the ship of the land because it was carrying people, number one, and it was also carrying goods. And it was taking them through the desert just like the ship takes them through the ocean. But Allah SWT did not mention that وَخَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ مِنَ الْجَمَلِ مَيَرْ kabun That we have created for them camels that they ride on. Why? Ulama mentioned that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have said that وَخَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ مِنَ الْجَمَلِ For example, that we have created camels that they ride on. Then in the 21st century, people use what? People use trucks, people use containers, people use trains, people use aeroplanes. So, there would have been, somebody would have think the Quran has not mentioned the truck, the Quran has not mentioned the aeroplane. So when Allah SWT said, وَخَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ مِنْ مِثْلِي Like it, similar to it, Allah kept it vague, ambiguous. He didn't say animal, he didn't say a particular thing. What do you say? Like it. So when you say like it, what happens? The truck is also inside this. The aeroplane also falls in this ayat. The container also falls in this ayat. The holy trains also fall in this ayat. And this shows how complete the Quran is. That in terms of the, in terms of the ocean, it's just it's a ship or a boat. You don't get uh, anything else. But on, in terms of land, there are def- different modes of transport. But Allah left it vague. Why? That as time moves and as humans progress, 
Many other transfers will come in and they will all fall under this ayat. The Allah SWT goes on to show his power. He says, And if we so will, we can drown them. We can drown them. And the airplane that is flying in the air, we can make that fall. It's in our power, it's our kudrat. If that happens, then no one will be able to respond to their cry. If you're in the middle of the ocean and the ship starts to go into a heavy storm and it is moving side to side and about to drown, people start screaming. Will your Lat and Uzza come, be able to come and save you? Will any power be able to come and save you? Allah said, nobody will save you then. If anything, who can save you then? Only Allah can save you. And nobody can rescue you. Nobody can hear your cries. In the middle of the ocean, you can cry as much as you want. Can anybody hear you? If anybody, only Allah can hear you. Only Allah listens to you. Only Allah can answer you. Only Allah can rescue you. So Allah was saying, that, oh, insan, after these nemats, why do you not turn to Allah? Why are you not obedient to Allah? Swan? And Allah swan says, that why do you not drown them? We have all the power. But why do you not drown them? Illa rahmatan min. Out of rahmat. Because of rahmat. Our rahmat is there. That's why we let them move from A to B and B to C. And the ship keeps moving and keeps sailing through the storm in easy in waves, without waves, no matter how heavy the ship is, it is moving. And Allah SWT says, the second reason why we can't let this happen is, unless we let them enjoy for a while. We let them enjoy for a while. What? That we have, we have fixed that they will come in this world for 60 years. So we let them enjoy for 60 years. Because in the end, they have to come to us anyway. So Allah SWT is remind, <coughs> reminding all of us. That the names that he has bestowed upon us are so great and so many that we owe him shukar at every uh, step, every breath of our life. And the main and the most important way of doing shukar is by amal, doing those things that Allah is pleased with his obedience, itaat, and then with the zaban as well. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Allahumma lak, Alhamdulillah, lak, ashuk. And also in our heart, that we feel deep down in our heart, that whatever is happening, all these nemats, only through the Father of Allah. I have no input. I have nothing to, I, I have no quality in me that I am worthy of this. It is only through the grace of Allah SWT that all these nemats he has bestowed upon us. Allah SWT grant us the correct understanding. Allah SWT grant us the topic to Dr. Muhammad bin Nashir. Alhamdulillah, we've been here for two days and we... We have some new brothers.